everybody, welcome to video four in the squat series. I want to teach you guys to understand the difference between quad squats and glute emphasized squats. And now it's important for you to acknowledge if you want to squat to improve your glutes, you can do that. If you want to squat to improve your quads, you can do that. And they look very differently. So if you ever see squat in your program, you should always ask that question first. Well, is it meant to be just a squat or is it meant to be a quad dominant or a glute dominant and the way we know that is is by the relative distance of that joint to the center of mass that sounds complex and it sounds uh, convoluted but it's really not we'll face that way you don't have to stand on there so if will stands up just normal his body is stacked through this center of mass right so his hip his knee and his ankle and his shoulder are all going directly through this imaginary line that I've just emphasized with this bar. So if you can imagine that going all the way up. Now we'll just bend your knees a little bit. A little more. Stop right there. So now his knees have traveled away from his center of mass. His hip has traveled away from his center of mass. By the look of it, it's about even. Go to the bottom of the squat. Good. Good. So right there. So the center of mass is right through the middle of his foot. It stays there. So that looks actually very balanced. So he's got relative same distance from, from the center of mass to his knee as he does to the center of mass to his hip, maybe a little bit bigger on this side, right? So if he's squatting, he's gonna have a relatively equal contribution of those two muscles to the movement. So what if he wanted to shift that? Well, can you just stay there and shift back into the hip dominant? A little further back if you can. Okay, good, right there. See how that shifted? Now he's got a huge amount of distance here and a little bit less there, right? So now Will's gonna be, if he does a squat, you can see now the hips way back here. So these muscles are gonna have to work a lot more. Now, Will, let's just put your heels up on that ramp, like kind of good amount up on the ramp. And I'm gonna keep this through his center of mass. Good, so that's where he is. Now go ahead and do a squat. Now look at that difference, right? So now his spine is really upright. So there's less loading through his spine, or at least other than axially and he's got a huge amount of distance from that knee. Do you see how that would be a completely different stimulus or challenge to that muscle? The muscles that cross that joint have to work exponentially harder. Uh, some people are gonna say, oh no, his knees are past his toes. I hope we're not still in that mentality because uh, it's certainly not a reality, but that's gonna completely change the exercise. Now, you may not always have a ramp to, to use, but something to elevate your heels is very important if you're trying to optimize quad recruitment. So it's important to acknowledge that I wouldn't just, can you just stand up, buddy? So I wouldn't just take him from a normal squat. Go ahead where you were. Actually off the, off the ramp, just a normal squat. So let's, let, let's actually measure this. Go ahead and go down to the squat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick an arbitrary distance. Let's say that's um, 12 inches or say 30 centimeters. Okay, so now let's, let's go back. So the relative distance, what I'm saying is, go do that one more time. Distance from the center of mass to that knee joint is 12 inches or 30 centimeters, more or less. That, th you can now come back, put your heels up. Good, so now if we're gonna measure that same distance. Mm, not quite 24 inches or 60 centimeters, but probably somewhere in the high 50s. So he's effectively doubled the distance from the center of mass to his knee. So he's literally doubled the amount of tension generating generation necessary by that quad just by doubling the distance. So he didn't have to put any more load on his back. His quads literally now have to do twice as much work based on the equation for torque, which is what we're measuring here when we're measuring exercise. So he's doing twice as much work. I would never in my life progress someone from 12, 12 inches of distance directly to 24 distance, inches of distance. We would press them, progress them from 12 to 14 to 16 to 18 to 24 slowly because it's, it's literally increasing the amount of work necessary at that muscle exponentially. So it's important for you guys to acknowledge that. So now the opposite is true, or the same is true with the opposite. Stand up, let's do glute. So again, just going back into perfect. Now, well, look at this. So we'll stop there because he knows what he's doing. Most people would continue to go down. Why did he stop there? If we're doing a glute emphasized um, squat, He's got the greatest amount of distance right there. And he also knows that that hip is as far as it can physically go. If he goes any further down into a squat, the hip can't go any further. The range only happens to happen increase to the spine. So it's important to acknowledge he just goes as far as he physically can at the hip. It doesn't matter what the exercise looks like on the outside. What it matters is what the exercise happen, what's happening at the joint. So when we're looking at challenging muscles, we're not looking at the entire big picture. We're not looking at how far the bar travels or anything like that. We're looking at joint by joint. How much is this joint traveling? And how much can I challenge that? So one little key tip for you guys, if 
Will goes too far in the squat and we see something moving that maybe shouldn't be, like his lower back, we know we've gone too far. So if something's moving that maybe you don't want to work, you've, you're doing something incorrectly. And I often just say, if it's, if it's moving, it's working or you're cheating. So one of the two to think about, uh, eliminate that extraneous movement at the spine and really focus on what's happening at the hip joint, and at the knee joint, in isolation or together.